Today's drawing is going to be of a triceratops. A triceratops is called a triceratops because he has three horns. One, two, three. He is a dinosaur and we're gonna draw him on a paper that goes horizontally. Uh, this is vertical or portrait. This is horizontal or landscape. First thing you're going to do is you're gonna fold your paper like a book. Unfold your paper and fold it like a hot dog bun. You should have four rectangles on your paper. The reason why we fold our paper is so that we can try and judge where we should put all of our details of our picture. For example, we're gonna draw the Triceratops's body shape, which is an egg shape first, and that's gonna go right in the middle of our paper. The creases help you judge where the middle of your paper is. So you'll need a pencil, uh, markers, Sharpie, or crayons to draw this picture. First thing we're gonna do, like I said, is we're gonna draw the Triceratops' body, which looks like an egg, but to the side. So it looks like a tipped over egg. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw another smaller egg for his head crown, the area that goes around his head. And this one's sticking straight up. If you want to, you can go ahead and erase where the body and the head overlap. So the head is now on top of the body. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw his back leg. His back leg is big because it supports all of his weight. So we're gonna draw his hip and then his foot. Oop, I forgot. His back of his back leg connects to his rump area. And if you want to, you can erase this line right here. If at any time I am going way too fast, then just pause the video or rewind it. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna draw his front leg and his front leg is kind of bent. So we're gonna draw a bent leg for the front. And it's a little bit smaller than the one in the back. Now you do wanna make sure that his leg is the same height as his back leg. Okay, I'm gonna erase this line here where his leg overlaps his body. And then I'm going to draw his tail. His tail kind of extends back from his back and curls down and drags on the ground. I'm gonna draw the bottom of his tail and connect it to the tip back there. And again, I'm gonna erase the part where his body and his tail connect. After that, we're gonna draw his face. His face comes out and stops right here on this crease. So there's a crease right here. I'm gonna draw a line that comes out and down. Same thing. Well, actually, I'm gonna draw the bottom of his mouth first and then his bottom jaw. It goes straight and then it curls up. After that, I'm gonna draw his eyeball, which is a frowny face and then a little happy face inside. And if you want to, you can color his eyeball in. He also has a little nostril, which is a backwards C, backwards shaped C. Now we're ready to draw his horns. He's got one horn on his nose that kind of goes backwards and faces his head. The other two are on the top of his head like a cow bull and they stick really bit high up off of his head. There's another one on the other side but you only see part of it and it should be a little bit smaller because it's farther away. I'm going to erase the lines that are inside 
of the horn because the horn is overlapping everything. And I'm gonna go back because I forgot something. I forgot to draw the legs in the background. I'm gonna draw another little foot peeking out back here. And then another leg peeking out back here. So it kind of looks like he's walking. Now our Triceratops is done besides being traced and colored. He's done being drawn. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the background, which is just a line for the ground at first, but then we're gonna draw some mountains, but they're actually volcanoes. I'm gonna start off by drawing some small ones in the front. One, two, and then I'll do a third one over here. Then I'm gonna do some big ones in the background. One, two, three. Now, if you want them to all be volcanoes, you can make some dripping lava coming out of each of the volcano's tops. If you want them to just be plain mountains or hills, you don't have to do the lava, just color them brown. The next thing you're gonna do is take a Sharpie or you can use a black marker or a black crayon and trace over your drawing. The reason why we trace over our drawing is to make our lines stand out, look nice and bold so that we can see the ones that we wanna keep and ignore the ones that were maybe mistakes as we were drawing. A lot of times as I'm tracing, I miss some of my pencil lines. So if you do that, you can take a big eraser or a small eraser when you're all finished and go over everything and get all those lines that you may have missed. When you're all finished, you can color it using markers or crayons. Don't forget to sign your artwork. When I colored mine, I first wanted to color my dinosaur brown, but then I noticed that he was gonna blend in with my mountains and my ground. So after I colored him brown, I added some gray, but then he still didn't really stand out a whole lot. So I took some green and I colored over him with green. So he's got brown, gray, and green on his skin. For the ground, I took and colored with a black, just kind of scribbled with a black, but then I colored it in nicely with a brown. And then for the mountains, I did the same, but I did it in opposite direction. I colored them sort of at a diagonal. I colored black first, and then I colored brown on top. For the blue sky, I just colored it all in blue. I can't wait to see some of your drawings. Don't forget to send them to me on Seesaw or Google Classroom.